What's up, babe? I'm Lauren of Lauren Leslie Studio. I'm a textile designer and surface pattern designer and artist. And in this video, we're gonna discuss five different ways to fill your sketchbook. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and like this video if you like this video. And be sure to stick around to the end because I have a little surprise for you. All right, let's jump in. So how can I fill my sketchbook while also improving my art? It's one thing to fill your sketchbook randomly without any kind of intention or direction and without really becoming a better artist. Right, Luna? Right? Yeah. It's an entirely different thing to fill your sketchbook while intentionally improving your art and becoming a better artist. So we're gonna talk about those five tips today. So let's jump into the first tip. <laughs> Number one, completing an art challenge. There are so many art challenges out there, such as the 100 Heads Challenge, 100 Hands Challenge, Inktober, Mermaid, and I have an art challenge over in my Design Tribe Facebook group, which is your 90 Days Project, which is meant to improve your art style specifically. So if you're interested in that, be sure to join the Facebook group over in the Design Tribe. When you complete an art challenge, you are essentially focusing on one thing, especially usually it's like one subject matter or uh, one medium or something like that. And so when you are able to focus down a little bit, it really helps to improve your art because you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And of course, practice makes progress. So anytime you do, you know, 100 drawings of something or 100 paintings of something or 100 sketches or whatever it is, you're going to improve your art. So I highly recommend doing an art challenge in your sketchbook and that will definitely fill up your sketchbook pretty fast. Step number two is to draw in pen and ink. When you're drawing in pen and ink, you can't erase. So it really kind of forces you to get the proportions down and stay within your page. So for example here, you can see I drew this church when I was in Paris. Um, and here was a little postcard that went along with it. But you can see that um, you kind of have to map out the top of your drawing, the bottom of your drawing, what goes in the center, and everything that kind of goes around it. And so when you're drawing in pen and ink, it really just forces you to become a better artist and really improve your art that way, um, especially if you're trying to go for realistic proportions or even proportions that you already have that's in your style. You kind of have to get it right the first time and kind of map that out. And of course you, again, can't erase. Step number three is to draw with markers. So when you're drawing with markers, you also can't erase just like drawing with pen and ink. And your markers generally come in a limited color palette. So it kind of forces you to work with colors that you wouldn't normally work with and just kind of experiment and get those cools and warms um, in contrast with each other. And it kind of also helps you create a sketch that um, the colors aren't so realistic. Like unless you're using, you know, more like Prismacolor markers or professional markers, um, even then it, the colors are extremely limited. So if you're only carrying around a few markers or a set color palette that you've already determined, then working with markers is really just gonna force you to uh, become a better artist and improve your art because you have to work with those colors. So you have to make it work. Almost always when you are trying to improve your art, giving yourself some kind of limitation or some kind of boundary is really gonna help improve your art and also fill your sketchbook. Which brings me to my next tip, have a limited color palette. So if you're working in pencil or pen and ink, obviously you're not gonna be using color, but once you um, kind of get past that point and you want to start experimenting with color, you can use things like markers or pastels or colored pencils and having that limited color palette previously planned out is really gonna just push you to the limits and it's really gonna just force you to become so much better at color because you have to work within these constraints, right? So you might find yourself using one particular color, or a few particular colors out of your palette over and over and over again, whereas you maybe thought you would have used a color but you actually didn't once you like go back and realize which ones you maybe weren't using. And of course, if you're working with a sketchbook, especially if you're drawing from life and like going around town, then you can only have like 
a few supplies with you. You can't bring your whole art studio with you. So you have to have that limited color palette and this will definitely fill your sketchbook and help improve your art, especially your eye and your taste for color. Color is literally one of the most important things in your sketchbook, so play around with using one limited color palette and then another before you, you know, work on a finished piece. Try to figure out what are your colors, what are the style of colors that, you know, makes your work cohesive and consistent. So your sketchbook is the best place to play around with different color palettes and see what's actually working for your art. So tip number five is to draw from life. I confess I haven't really been that great about keeping up this practice since I've been out of college, but it was something I did in college a lot, especially when I studied abroad in Italy and I was surrounded by other artists who were also drawing from life, so it wasn't so weird. I wasn't like the only one, you know, sitting there drawing people in a cafe like we all were. So drawing from life definitely helps sharpen your skills and improve your art because if you're drawing uh, people sitting in a cafe, for example, like they're gonna be moving. So you have to like really get that gesture image down quick and kind of plan out the composition and you know you might be drawing in different elements that maybe aren't even there uh, but that really just helps uh, focus your style and it really helps just get that impression down on the page that you could always come back to later and create a more finished drawing where you don't have your subjects in front of you so of course it's going to come out somewhat different. Drawing from life really just helps you get that scene down quickly and get that impression down before someone moves. <laughs> now of course if you're drawing buildings or trees or a landscape or something like that, it's not going to move as much, but if you're drawing people, animals, people that are actually in the scene, then you have to you know, get that gesture down really quick because otherwise it won't be there. <laughs> It's also amazing to think that this is how all artists worked before photography became uh, accessible to everyone. So artists always had to draw from life, they had to have subjects, they had to figure out how to draw and they really used their sketchbook as a framework to go back to to create more finalized pieces. So this was kind of like their photograph, the initial sketch from life. So I really encourage you to work both ways. Alright guys, now it's time for your free surprise. So I'm offering a free mini course called Art Style Secrets that you can sign up for on my website. Um, I'll link it in the description below. So if you would like to sign up for that, you can go ahead. And it's all about, uh, it's three different lessons. It's a mini course that really just helps you get unblocked and get into the right mindset to focus on creating your own art style. Not having your own art style is something that a lot of artists struggle with. And of course, practicing in your sketch book is the perfect place to start to develop your own art style. So be sure to check that out over on my website at laurenlesley.com and Leslie is spelled with an E-Y. Also, if you'd like to sign up for the 90 Days Project, uh, which is a free 90 day art style challenge, then be sure to head over to the Design Tribe over on Facebook. It's at facebook.com slash groups slash design tribe Lauren Leslie. And I would love to have you over in the free group. It is a private group, so you'll have to answer all three questions to be able to join. But I look forward to seeing you over in the group and joining the Design Tribe. What'd you think about that? Hmm? Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. You can find me over on Instagram at Lauren Leslie Studio. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and click the little bell to get notified every time I come out with a new video. I believe something like 86 ish percent of you are not subscribed so it would mean the world to me if you actually subscribe to my channel and that way you'll never miss a video from me. All right guys, I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.